Welcome to Free Flow Friday, powered by the Property Profits Real Estate Podcast. I'm Dave Debo, and I'm very excited to give you an over-the-shoulder learning experience around raising capital, as well as other tips, tricks, and strategies to help you on your real estate investing journey. So let's start. Let's discover together. All right. Welcome, everybody. This is Dave Debo with another one of our Zooming In trainings. Our special expert guest today is Mr. Kyle Ford talking about Cottage Rentals 101, and to just prove the fact that he lives what he's talking about, he's zooming in from the cottage today. So how are you doing today, Kyle? I'm great, Dave. Thanks for having me on. Excited, uh, always excited to talk about cottages. So Yeah, well, I'm really, really excited about this because uh, you guys have got this really, really dialed in. So I uh, I can't wait to, to see what you're up to with Cottage Rentals, the big benefits you know, this pandemic thing, everybody is freaking out about it, but I think this has done nothing but good things for cottage rentals from, from what I've, I've understood. And, and we'll see if, if you, if your crystal ball says it's going to keep going that way. Yeah, it's been a, it's, it's been a great year all in all. And uh, based on our, our, our next year's forecast um, and, you know, pre bookings and stuff, I think the domestic travel is going to be here to stay for a bit and uh, definitely looking at uh, continuing to grow in the space. Awesome. Very good. Well, I'll let you take it away, my friend. I'm just going to mute myself and turn off my ugly mug so they can focus on you. Great. <laughs> I, I think your mug's great, by the way, though, though Dave. So uh, I appreciate uh, it, Kyle. Thanks, buddy. Awesome. So I have a presentation today, as you can see here. Uh, I've listed my lovely fiance on here, Chelsea. She couldn't be here with us today. Uh, she is my co-venturer in the cottage rental business. Um, so uh, we call it Cottage Rentals 101. Uh, the way I, the way I like to do this presentation is uh, tell you a little bit about our, ourself and our story. And our story has a lot of great you know great nuggets in it on, on how to build a cottage rental business. Um, so I'll kind of start with a little bit about who we are. Uh, we're real estate investors. We're real estate investors uh, out of Kitchener uh, originally. We are currently living in Grand Bend, Ontario, which is where the bulk of our cottages are. Um, our other businesses have moved basically fully remote since COVID. So uh, might as well work from the cottage. I can see my boat and sea dues from my office. So it's the perfect spot to be. Uh, we started investing in 2013. I've done all elements of investing. So I've been in uh, single family rentals, uh, uh, triplexes, big building burrs. We flipped pre-construction condos. Most recently we're doing, uh, sorry, I do a ton of private lending as well. And most recently we're into larger scale land development. Uh, the cottage rental uh, oh, sorry, and large scale land development uh, I also am a mortgage broker. I run the Kyle Ford Mortgage Team. Uh, Chelsea runs a home staging and design business as well. Um, this is a little out of date. It says we currently own 11. We actually own 12 cottages under uh, Simply Paradise. Um, kind of our focus here is uh, on clean, as Chelsea would say, insta-worthy, family-friendly friendly cottages. Um, and we are most recently also expanding into the motel business. So if anyone's seen the, the recent motel makeover on Netflix, uh, we have a similar project uh, underway right now, which I'm excited to share about in the future. Um, so just kind of diving in uh, a little bit about the cottage rental business and how we got into it and, you know, some of the deals that we did. Um, the very first cottage we purchased was back in 2016. Uh, that was prior to Chelsea and I's relationship. I bought this one on my own. Uh, this is a cottage we purchased about two and a half hours north. And when I did this deal, it was predominantly a lifestyle investment. So uh, the, the, the goal for me when I did this deal wasn't massive cash flow, wasn't income replacement, wasn't you know, those main core investment philosophies that we like to focus on in a lot of our investments. I just wanted a cottage that the renters paid for when I wasn't using it. And even if it cost me a couple grand a year at the end, I looked at that as kind of like a vacation budget. Um, so kind of a cool, uh, cool story with this one. I negotiated a 90% vendor take back mortgage. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know what a VTB is, it is when the seller of the property holds the mortgage for you. So there was no credit checks. There was no income verification. We were drinking Corona on that lovely dock that you see there when we negotiated this deal in good mind, in good sound mind, I might add. Um, we negotiated this 90% VTB. So took over this cottage, uh, had it for the first year, went pretty well. I think it net cost me a couple grand that year to own that property, which I, like I said, I was okay with. Uh, the following year though, we, we started, uh, you know, we, we blocked out some weeks, but then we got some good requests for 
for money for those weeks and we decided to rent them out and before we knew it this cottage was you know it was making money now but we couldn't really enjoy it ourselves so that's when we made the decision to move to our our, our next uh property this is what we call scoot shack uh you're going to notice throughout this uh that we have a lot of cheeky names for our cottages scoot is our dog um uh this the this the branding that we put into the cottage is great for marketing <coughs> excuse me uh people love the names uh we have it's part of our repeat business we have people saying i stayed at scoot shack last time i stayed at the lazy bear the time before that what else do you got where else can we stay they want to they want to experience them all so this is the second one that we purchased and but same thing with this one we weren't really trying to build a cottage business at this point the challenge was, is we were renting out our other cottage so much, we couldn't use it. So we bought this one and we said, okay, this is the one. We're going to use this one most of the time, only rent it out a little bit. And then uh, we have our we have our cottage that, that's ours. So once again, use a private lender to get into this deal. You're going to see in the cottage business, fi uh, specifically around short-term rentals, financing is very, very difficult. It's not impossible. There are definitely workarounds, but using private money is a great tool that we use to uh, accelerate our, our growth in this business. So when we, when we had this one, uh, you're gonna notice this is a bit, a bit of a theme as we go here. We, uh, once again, started renting the cottage out too much. Couldn't really enjoy it very much. Uh, it started being rented all the time. And that's when we kind of started having our, a little bit of our aha moment, like, hey, this cash flow is really good. And I got some long-term rentals back in Kitchener, but they are not cash flowing anywhere near what these cottages are. So an opportunity presented itself. So, sorry, I just want to jump, uh, show you some pictures here. Um, this is the, uh, up at the top was the original, uh, the original decor of this cottage. Uh, as you can see, Chelsea instified it, uh, made it beautiful uh, and, and great to look at. Uh, in our experience, we hear people say all the time, they want a rustic cottage experience. That is not what our business has found. We found that people want beautiful they want granite they want air conditioning they want dishwashers they want all the bells and whistles they don't tend to want uh what they've told us they want which is rustic they want the nice stuff so there's a little bit of the before and after so you can see here uh we did a major kitchen rehaul in the bottom right here but some of the rooms we just simply painted added flooring and added more beds so you can see in this one specific room this sleeps four uh they say in this industry beds and heads so the more people you can get into a cottage, the, the higher the uh, night per uh, rent per night you can get, uh, which obviously increases your cash flow. Um, and also, uh, we have a lot of people that like to combine groups. Uh, brother, sister, kids, grandma and grandpa, a group of 10 of them, they want to come. Uh, that's how they make it affordable for themselves. And that's how they uh, and that's how we get top dollar for our cottages. So so that was the before and after. So this in 2019 is when we purchase our beachfront property. and. This is when we started taking the cottage rental business a little bit more seriously. You're gonna see in the next couple of slides, some of the things we did. This is another property that we purchased with a vendor take back mortgage. Uh, we got it financed at over 90% loan to value. So it was over a million dollar purchase price. And we had the, the vendor lend us back a million dollars on this. Uh, this is a property that we were able to carry for the last several years. Um, and I just, before this presentation, uh, uploaded our new development that's going on there. So this started off as just a single family cottage that we rented off. We are now putting a luxury uh, boutique condo building on there. Uh, it's gonna be three to four units, depending on what we can get approved. Um, but this is a luxury uh, boutique type property. Now, um, our intention is actually to live in these condos, not rent them out. Uh, but if they were to go on Airbnb or any other short-term rental website, we would, it would be very, very lucrative. These things would rent for $500 to $1,000 a night all day long. Um, so going forward from here, uh, this is another uh, another interesting strategy and story that I'll, I'll tell you in relation to cottage rentals. Um, this is a property that was right, the first two that I showed you in Grand Bend were 16 and 17 pine. This property came up and it was 18 pine, right at the corner. So I like to say we own, it, it was the house between Boardwalk and Park Place. So when this property came up, full transparency we were not in a position to buy it we had other major projects going on we had a lot of a lot of other irons in the fire we were not in a great position but the cool thing about this one is there was 10 people that owned this cottage 10 kids that owned it and some of them wanted to sell it and some of them didn't 
What we actually did on this property is we did, and this is a great tool for you to, to use when you're negotiating on buying cottages. It could be an emotional experience for the, a family to be selling the property. We negotiated a one year close. So we're gonna make the offer today, agree to a price today, put the deposit down today, but we're not gonna close for a year. And the way we positioned that wasn't that, hey, we're not ready to buy it right now. It was, this gives the whole family one last summer, every kid gets a week at the cottage, everyone gets a chance to say goodbye to it, and then we'll be closing the following year. Worked out really well, they went for it right away. They had no idea that it had nothing to do with the fact that we weren't in a position to close on it. Another kind of cool thing that I'll point out here, if you look in the top right, you can see that there's a bunch of trees over here. That was actually blocking the lake view of this property. So in that year time between when we, uh, we and we owned the property across the road, we actually cut down those trees and turned this property from a non lake view property to a lake view property. And even after we build our condos, there's still going to be a lake view. So that was a great way to value add uh, to this property by increasing the lake view. So this is a property, we did a full burr on it. We were able to get our full cash out on the refi. Uh, we originally closed with a private lender. Uh, this pro property right now, um, we purchased for 465, uh, no, $435,000. Uh, and to put it into perspective, it's renting for about thirty five dollars to $4,000 a week. So when we talk about the 1% rule, uh, we are generating well, well above that. This is closer to a 2% rule cottage. Um, from there, uh, this is, as I mentioned, this is when we started getting a little bit more serious about the cottage rental space. Uh, these are a couple, three other cottages that we bought in the previous year. Uh, all of these are in the Grand Bend area. We were buying them. Uh, we were doing full burrs on them, acquiring with private lending, uh, refinancing to, to burr out. Uh, these two cottages, we were able to pull increase value of $200,000 in 90 days, which was a cool, pretty cool deal. Um, I'll show you some before and after. So once again, uh, if we look at the top right here, we're not doing a major rehab in some of these. Um, we simply added a coat of paint, some stylish decor. And these are the things that, you know, really create that Instagram uh, uh, photo experience that people tend to want, really creating a moment. Um, so if you look at below, you can see here, this, this cottage was mostly clean patch and paint. Um, and we were able to get a massive lift on this property. Now, going to the next cottage, You'll see here, this one we did more of a, a full-blown rehab. Uh, we actually discovered that they, the previous owners had lowered the ceiling height by four feet. Uh, so when we got into the project, we were able to see that, uh, open it all up and create this luxury design feel. Um, so I'll just skip through these. I know not everyone's here to see all the pretty photos, but uh, they, can be, they can be great to, to look at as well. Um, this is the, the final one that we bought in 2020. Um, this was kind of a cool deal. Uh, this is right when COVID hit. Uh, we were currently sitting with multiple vacant cottages. Uh, during the first wave of COVID, uh, we, did, we were not renting the cottages at all. Everything was shut down. We were honoring the short-term rental ban. So we shut everything down. Uh, and a neighbor here actually came to us and said, you know, we're, 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 this COVID thing is, is kind of freaking us out. We want out of the cottage business. We're selling it. So we picked this one up for $400,000. Uh, to put it into perspective, the cottage was appraised one year later for eight fifty after our renovations. And as you can see in the bottom left corner, we actually severed a lot off the side of it. We're going to be building a luxury seven bed, four and, bath, four and a half bath home. So this started off as, hey, I want to buy a cottage. I'm okay with spending a couple bucks a month. If I have to help carry it, I want to vacation it to a, a, a portfolio of properties um, and into larger building and development. Um, so I'll get into a little bit more of the nuts and bolts here. Uh, this, this shocks, uh, a lot of people, um, our booking rate through Airbnb is only about 20% of our total bookings. So Airbnb is a great tool. Uh, it's one of our core calendars that we use in our business. So the, the, the actual, um, format and layout of Airbnb is, is, is fantastic. Uh, it's a great way to fill our vacancies. But the bulk of what we do is actually on Facebook. Um, we rent to people who don't even know that they're looking for a cottages uh, for a cottage. So Chelsea will post um, in buy and sell groups, uh, Facebook Marketplace, just pictures of our cottage, and we get a ton of bookings through that. Uh, we have Kijiji uh, as well as <clears throat> uh, 
uh, VRBO, um, and I believe uh, we've tried a little bit of Expedia. It wasn't really for us, um, but mo the bulk of our, 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 our bookings are private bookings. Uh, because of the number of cottages we have now, what we do is we do a lot of marketing on Facebook Marketplace Buy and Sell. We have our own website, simplyparadisefr.com. Uh, feel free to go there and check it out. We'd love for you guys to give some feedback. Um, that's our landing page. So we promote on Facebook, go check out the website. They look at the properties, uh, look at some of the different locations, and we do a lot of cross-sell from there. Um, uh, we mentioned it here, naming the cottages, branding. Um, that's become very effective for us. Uh, we have people who, like I said, they want to come back to the different cottage based on the names. Uh, it's a bit of a funny story. We're in Grand Bend. That's where we live. We're walking our dog. People hear us. Oh, would you just say your dog's name is Scoot? Oh, that's the cottage we're staying at. We're like, yeah, that's that's us. So um, kind of cool, cool. Uh, it, it's cool marketing and definitely, definitely branding. Um, this is a big one that I want to talk, uh, maybe spend a little bit more time to camp out on here. Um, Off-season marketing. Uh, most people, sorry. Most people um, are budgeting way too high of vacancy in off season for their cottages. I'm seeing people say, well, I'm only going to count on eight months a year because, uh, you know, we're not going to get any rentals in the winter. Uh, we run about a 95 to 98% occupancy rate. Uh, which is almost unheard of. Um, and what that a lot has to do with is, first of all, hot tubs. Uh, hot tubs have, are, and I promise you, if you're getting into the cottage rental business, you're going to hate me for telling you to get a hot tub because they are a pain in the butt. There's a lot of maintenance involved. Uh, but hot tubs drive our business in the winter rental. Uh, we make a ton of revenue from these hot tubs. And I'll give you a bit of a breakdown here. We book our cottages in three booking periods. You can either book a one week stay from Friday to Friday. You can book a weekend from Friday to Monday, or you can book a Monday to Friday. So if we use it, if we break it down to Friday to Monday and Monday to Friday, that's eight booking cycles in a month. On average, you're gonna get eight booking cycles, two a week times four weeks, eight booking cycles. If we were to just do in January, $500 per booking cycle. So Monday to Friday for $500 and a Friday to Monday for $500. That's $1,000 a week. Times four weeks is $4,000 a month. Times three months in the off season is an additional $12,000 in revenue. We are getting a lot more than $500 for those booking periods. The Monday to Fridays in January, yeah, we're probably getting like six, six fifty, but that's better than vacant, right? That's supporting our off-season property maintenance. So we we have to keep we have to maintain the properties anyway. So we might as well have revenue coming through. But on average, we're getting about six fifty for a Monday to Friday, and about nine hundred to a thousand for a weekend. We do uh, promotions with local restaurants and businesses to recommend them as, as things as something to do. We all we add the cottage, we add the hot tubs, which has been the, the the main driver. We do little things like board games. Uh, people are looking for different things to do. Um, and here, I'm based out of Ontario. I mean, you and your spouse can only go to Niagara Falls so many times for the weekend. Uh, I mean, it gets old fast. So we have so many people coming here to do, you know, just a couple's weekend. Or, hey, a couple of friends from high school are getting together. And if you have four couples for a weekend in January for 800 bucks, it's 200 bucks per couple. It's a drop in the bucket compared to the hotel. Um, this this part of our business has been actually dramatically improved from COVID, uh, where we've seen a lot more revenue coming through. I'll use this section to talk a little bit about COVID and some of the challenges that we've seen in COVID. Um, so since since COVID, we've had um, we've had three short term rental lockdowns. So essentially, the government's saying that short term rentals is non essential business. So during the first lockdown, we fully shut down. Obviously, COVID was new, so many unknowns. Um, we didn't want to be a part of the problem. We fully shut down our business, shut down all rentals, canceled everybody, did not have anybody. When the second lockdown came around, uh, we pivoted. So uh, we, we made the decision that the short-term rental ban was 28 days or less, and this was in February. 
So we decided to rent the cottages for a month. You can rent it for a month for 30 days and work from home for the next lockdown. It actually worked pretty good. We got a handful of bookings at the cottages that were available. Um, people saying, hey, yeah, I've been locked in my house for a year. I'll go for $2,000, $3,000 for a month. Sure, we'll go hang out at the cottage and work from there. We made sure we were respectful to the rules. We asked people to quarantine when they got there, not shop at the local grocery store right away, wait until they were, were good and healthy and all that stuff. Once again, in the small towns, we want to make sure we're respectful of our neighbors uh, in the cottage communities who can be a little bit more fearful of people traveling from out of town. So that was the second lockdown. Uh, by the time the third lockdown came around, um, the, the rules became pretty clear. Uh, you were only allowed to rent to people who were in need of housing. So uh, we adjusted all of our bookings uh, that every uh, person who came to the cottage had to declare that they were in need of housing. So uh, we, we did lose bookings. When I mentioned the 95 to 98% occupancy, that's not including COVID. Um, when, when we were in those short-term rental bans, we were running about 60, maybe 70% occupancy. Um, but what we did found is there was a lot of people still looking for accommodations. So that was people who were, um, there was, we, we heard everything under the moon. Our house was getting renovated. So we, uh, we booked a cottage. The, we finally got our contractors in. They were going to be working at the house. We booked the cottage to stay. We're in need of housing. Um, we, we heard some not as good stories. Uh, we're having uh, marital problems. Uh, my, 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 myself and my kids are going to come stay at the cottage for a couple of weeks. My spouse and I need, need space. Uh, we've heard uh, more positive stories. People, hey, listen, we're working remote now. We love Grand Bend. We're going to book this for two weeks. We're house shopping. We're coming up. We're, go we're looking to move to this area. We're going to relocate. We're house shopping. So uh, we actually were quite surprised at how busy we were uh, in the third lockdown when we were made ourselves available to in need of emergency housing. Uh, we did have the police called in that in uh, where some of the neighbors didn't think we were following the rules. Uh, the police, uh, invest, I showed them all of the emails. Uh, I showed them some of the stories from the tenants about why they were staying. And the police fully deemed that we were operating within the rules um, and did not, we weren't, weren't fined, we weren't charged, and we were uh, advised that we were welcome to proceed under those terms. So uh, definitely, definitely scary times for some short-term rental operators. Uh, but I encourage you to, to look in your area look at what the rules are in your area what are the guidelines what does everybody say is allowed uh talk to your counselor talk to the local police and by all means follow the rules like the rules exist for a reason we got to keep everyone safe uh but you can still operate a profitable business so i wanted to add that section in the off-season marketing here um just some just some tips and tricks around ex expense and management uh our businesses are basically all google drive now um it, it links really well shares on email um we do. We use a Google Sheet uh, to communicate with our maintenance people. So at the at the point we're at now, we have a full time guest experience manager who does all the front end of the business. Chelsea does all the sales, and we have two maintenance guys. So the sheets work really well. Um, when we get maintenance requests in, we have the maintenance guys go out. They can uh, list hot tub uh, maintenance, uh, confirming things were done on time. So Google Drive works really well for us. Uh, we use Excel spreadsheets and, and uh, for our internal stuff and the Airbnb calendar for our uh, our master calendar. Um, this is a great one here. We, we, we have brought our cleaning in-house now where we have uh, on-staff cleaners as well. Uh, generally, that's not going to make sense for you until you hit about the five property range. Until then, work and hire with a reputable cleaner or cleaning companies and pay them well. Do not nickel and dime these cleaners. These cleaners, especially if you're not local to the property, these people can be your your, your the, the holy grail for you. They're, they're, they're your saviors. Um, they're able to, uh, we have cleaners that do uh, uh, product runs. So they go pick things up for us. They go get things for us. Um, they uh, help and, and assist with any uh, issues. So we've had people not leaving the property on time, cleaners showing up on time, making sure they're removed. Uh, just little stuff like that. Hire, empower, and embrace your cleaner. Uh, damage deposits, make sure you take them. Uh, sometimes we've had very few times where we've had to, but when you have to, you have to. Um, signage in cottages, I call them Chelsea's passive aggressive signs, uh, but they're, they're great. Um, 
you need to be clear with people. You can't expect – there's a reason why Tim Horton still has to put the coffee is hot, right? You have to you have to be clear with people. And these science, these science are going to make your management easier if you're self-managing in the beginning. beginning. And I love what uh, – this is Chelsea's part, but she put uh, professional cottage check-in instructions, the FAQs. So there's a bit of an example on the bottom one here. Uh, that was for our template of Hard Knox Life. That's another cottage we own. Knox is our son. So that's kind of a cheek, another cheeky name. But these are the professional check-in instructions. Once again, these some things might seem obvious to you, but if you've never been there, you, you don't necessarily know. We have people traveling from abroad who, who don't speak English. So when they're coming to this a, a new country, a new cottage, they don't necessarily know everything. Now, translating these things can be harder, but, but give, giving them as much information as possible is going to make your life easier from a management perspective. Uh, the FAQs are, are absolutely key. Um, I think that pretty much uh, wrap, uh, wraps things up. No, not here for a sales pitch by any means, but if you're interested in booking, info at Simply Paradise. And if you have any questions on mortgages, my email's, my email's there. Holy smokes, that... Uh... Kyle, that was awesome. Thanks, buddy. And and my hat off to you and Chelsea for doing such a, a kick-ass job with this business model. I mean, you guys deserve all the success that you're enjoying because you are treating this like a business. It sounds like you kind of stumbled into it in a fun way. Yep. <laughs> but, you know, um, absolutely, absolutely fantastic. I love your cheeky names. I can see why that is so appealing. I can see why so many people want to hop from cottage to cottage within your portfolio instead of finding somebody else because A, it's fun. B, you've got these Instagram worthy cottages. So you're, you're head and shoulders above some of your competition, I'm sure. Yep. And you, you just, it seems like you guys are just super professional and very, very well organized. So yeah, that is awesome. And hey, Ben, I want to, I just want to tell you, Thank you so much for um, laying out such a clear explanation. I was saying, okay, well, I'm going to come up with some questions. Well, you answered all the damn questions. <laughs> that was a big one I was going to ask is about the housekeeping. So that was really good because I was going, okay, at what point do you hire your own crew? When does that make sense? So, okay, five plus cottages, I can see that. Um, other things that, that popped into my head from your presentation is it really is all about how many people you can get in that cottage. So number of beds, number of heads, you know, my, myself and our, our family were staying at an Airbnb in Mexico this, this uh, December. And that was a big thing, right? Cause it's exactly that it's myself, my wife, her son, my adult kids, their partners. So how do we all stuff into, you know, it's all about how do we all get in the same place and, and have a good time. So yeah, man, that is absolutely fantastic and i also like the fact that you're really really focused on one community like like you've created your own little monopoly board there like you say you own you know ding 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 <laughs> all yeah. three of the properties there and then the fact that you got the owner financing and you you're able to make it a real win-win for that family because i was thinking when you said there's 10 kids involved i'm going oh my god and if some of them want to sell some of them don't then so that was an estate situation kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. Great grandma, grandma passed away. She had ten children. Wow. Uh, the the f five wanted to sell, five didn't, but they were out of money. The estate yeah. was out of money to pay for it, so it wasn't really a choice. But when my offer came in with a one year close, everybody gets one last hoorah. Yeah, it was kind of they had they did their calculations. They had just enough money for another year. Yeah. They, they knew it was sold then, so they didn't have to worry about the market crashing. Yeah. Everybody gets one more vacation, so it worked out really well. It did work out really well. Plus, they got a little bit of cash up front to, to know that you're serious and help cover the cost for the year and all that kind of good stuff. That's right. Oh, really, really smart. So if you don't mind sharing, Kyle, how, how much of your focus is on this area? Of, I know you're a full-time mortgage broker as well, but within your portfolio, is this your main thing these days? Uh, candidly, Dave, no, uh, it's Ch Chelsea is the full-time operator of this business. Mm -hmm. Uh, she, she, uh, we, and we, and we built infrastructure. We have the full-time guest experience manager. Uh, she's on salary. She runs the, the front end. 
Uh, we have two cleaners on staff plus four more uh, independent contractors. We have two maintenance people on staff plus two more independent contractors. Wow. So um, I run, I still am involved in the construction and the development side mm -hmm. uh, as well as the financing side. But as the front end operator, no, that, that's Chelsea. Um, I'm doing some pretty major development stuff in the mortgage business right now, which is mm -hmm. tends to be where my focus is. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, again, Kyle, thank you so much for sharing that. That was super cool, my friend. And uh, yeah, you guys, if you're looking for a cottage in Ontario, now you know the guy that can get you hooked up. That's for sure. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's uh, let's see. Oh, Suzanne's watching here on Facebook. No question, just says, thanks very much. <laughs> Dave and Kyle. Awesome. Very good, Suzanne. Thanks for, thanks for being part of this. And Kyle, thanks for sharing. I'll, and we'll get this up on the podcast. I, I think a lot of people are going to get some great value from this. Yeah, happy to help, Dave. And uh, yeah, anyone looking for a cottage in the Grand Bend area, uh, happy to help. And if you, if you have questions, guys, you know, Chelsea and I are happy to help. Uh, shoot, shoot us a quick, quick message. We're, we, we're never too busy to take the time to answer, answer a small question to help get someone started. Well, that was the other cool thing that I appreciate you sharing is about the marketing, because my initial assumption is, hey, it's probably 90% Airbnb, 10% everything else. And it's almost the opposite. You're, you guys are 80% other stuff, 20% Airbnb, which was surprising. And that, that's how we hit that occupancy rate. Yeah. Like, no, and and I'll, I'll do a little bit of a humble brag here, but like almost nobody's running 98% occupancy at a cottage. Not on a seasonal thing, yeah, for yeah, sure, man. It, it, no, nobody's doing that, and when we're when we post those Monday to Fridays in January for six hundred bucks, you know, there's we're in a, a tech forward environment. We're in the COVID environment. We get a lot of couples being like, you know, I'm homeschooling my kids right now. We just want to go look at a different color of paint on the wall. Like we don't we don't care. Like we just want to go somewhere else and do something else. Or yeah. we, um, we, you know, we'll get uh, construction guys coming up in the area they're like we're pulling our per diem we're going to take the cottage and pocket our per diem and the we're going to hang out and drink beer and hang out in your hot tub at night and not tell the boss sure yeah. that's fine so it's uh by by doing that direct marketing on facebook that's filling things in advance and then our calendars are full on airbnb which i think creates a bit of that scarcity yeah. where people are like oh man this place is booked all the time like look there's a spot we're getting now yeah. Let's take it now. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's a. Uh, wow. Once again, that was another thing that it just kind of started where we were on an Airbnb, and you know, when when we started leveling up a little bit, I'm like, Chell, start like posting on Facebook. We got to fill these things, and before we knew it, that became our primary, you know, primary primary source of rental. That is so cool, man. Kyle, thank you so much, my friend. I truly, I truly, truly appreciate it. Um, yeah, fantastic. No problem, Dave. Thanks for having me on and uh, glad, glad I can help and share with our, our experiences. All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Talk to you soon. Thanks a lot, Kyle. No problem. Well, hey there. Thanks for tuning into the Property Profits Podcast. If you like this episode, that's great. Please go ahead and subscribe on iTunes. Give us a good review. That'd be awesome. I appreciate that. And if you're looking to attract investors and raise capital for your deals, then I'm going to invite you to get a complimentary copy of my newest book right back there. There it is. The Money Partner Formula. You can get a PDF version at InvestorAttractionBook.com. Again, InvestorAttractionBook.com. Take care.